Hi, my name is Kush. Today in this lecture, we will be discussing international relations, its nature and scope. This topic is the part of uh, BA part 3rd political science on this uh, syllabus, paper 6. And uh, this should be helpful for, of course, BA part 3rd political science students. At the same time, MA political science students too. Before we start, let's look at the objectives. The first objective would be to understand the meaning of international relations. We will understand the nature of international relations, its scope, that is the subject matter. We will also see finally the significance of the study of international relations. If you look at the map, we mostly see uh, different states in the world and international, international relations is related to the interactions between these states, what you see in, on the map, and uh, the how they are conducting their relations uh, with the help of their foreign policy. So each country uh, in political science, we also call them states. So from now on, I'll be using the word states. So these states, they are using their foreign policy as tools to enhance their national interest. And therefore, we see constant interactions between these states. Uh, which remains the core area of international relations. Apart from that, of course, uh, there are other issues also, for example, international organizations and uh, multinational corporations and all these uh, and different issues we will be discussing in international relations. Before that, let's look at the background of, before we come to meaning of international relations, let's understand uh, certain facts. Uh, certain events which were very important uh, in order to develop this uh, discipline. So the word international was used for the first time by Jeremy Bentham, a political scientist, and uh, this was uh, somewhere in late 18th century. We also see European imperial in expansion. So we know that Treaty of Westphalia that took place in 1648 and from there you see the emergence of sovereign nation states for the first time and these sovereign nation states that particularly in Europe and these states are trying to maximize their powers because now they believe in more sort of self-determination so these states will be seeking uh, to garner their interest they will also be maximizing their interest and therefore they would need more and more colonies across the world. If you remember, that is also the time when industrial revolution is taking place and uh, the countries in Europe, they are expanding their sphere of influence, be it in Asia or Africa or South America. Therefore, we see this race, this competition that has led to form alliances uh, by the end of 19th century and the beginning of 20th century, we see that culminates in the First World War and later, after 20 years, the Second World War. Uh, these two world wars were never seen before and had, it, they were the most uh, devastating, uh, the world wars. And simultaneously, we see now the world community is trying to figure out that to, to how to understand the actions of states, how to understand the behavior of states, and how to understand the major uh, incidents taking place around the world, that is uh, the conflicts between the states, why states fight, what are those complex issues. So in order to understand all this, the scholars, they are focusing on another a, a discipline that was known as international relations which emerged as an academic discipline after the first world war we also see a post-world war world where now the world leaders they are trying to find ways out to build a more peaceful world and also to establish a global government building international organization for example you must be knowing the league of nations after the first world war was being established because they wanted to avoid another war. Similarly, 
we also had united nations because the conflicts had to be handled or mitigated and therefore the international organizations they were sought as they were perceived as platforms which would help states to come together and discuss different issues and the pro and problems however we see simultaneously the world is now seeing a bipolar bipolarity that is the one pole of power is the soviet union and another pole is the united states they are fighting on ideological terms and that was later known as the cold war era that entire 1945 to 1991 till the collapse of the soviet union so what we see a power and polarity from 1990 to 1991 so one can say that this is the way the world would look look the world looked like in all those years and then international relations also were somewhere it was revolving around that uh, structure what we see in 1991 after 1991 till almost 2000 for a decade that world has witnessed a unipolar world that is one power dominating one superpower that is the united states of america we also witness another phenomenon that is called globalization with the help of advancement of science and technology now we have seen that the, the rapid growth of uh, economic might of different countries we also see that uh, the the advancement of technology be it internet or be it the the uh, expansion of multinational corporations so the now the world is almost looking like a global village and where the interdependence of states is increasing like never before we also see the divide also simultaneously the world is has seen is seeing one global north which is developed part of developed countries and we see global south where most of the third world countries developing countries are there so this divide has brought more rifts in international system another important uh, events we see that uh, emergence of new threats for example example terrorism for example environmental issues now uh, are becoming very complex and other threats such as even covid 19 the virus corona virus what we are witnessing right now so it's not a problem of a state or one state or two states it is affecting entire world community so if we look at this entire scenario i think it's quite tempting to understand what is international relations the meaning of international relations but before that we also come across a word called international politics and international relations so often we use it in a very uh, synonymous terms but then scholars they have argued that of course the core of international relations is international politics but a clear distinction between the two is important to be made for example international relations they are different in their subject matter international relations would be focusing more on uh, more than political aspects of states relations that is cultural all at the same time historical economic dimensions of uh, informal unofficial uh, uh, relations but when it comes to international politics it would mainly talk about that politics the government the officials how they are interacting between one state to another states so that remains more uh, a narrow in terms of its scope and the international relations would be broader in its scope because it covers more areas than international politics let me repeat international politics would focus more on political dimension of relations between states whereas international relations would be focusing more on more than political aspects that is economic uh, cultural or uh, of non officials or uh, even the more than governments so sometimes relations are not related to mainly governments it could be maybe some non state actors as well interacting so international relations encompasses broader area they are also different in methodologies as well for example uh, international politics would be uh, sometime even historical uh, studies it will rely on it will also rely on analytical uh, way of study whereas we see international relations now focusing more on uh, scientific studies analytical of course and at the same time it's like more of empirical uh, studies are being done Uh, which is helping them to build theories in this discipline we see the different objectives of international relations and international politics sometimes that is 
international relations should be focusing more on um, how to establish peace and 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 uh, a, 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 an order involved a commun in, involved system whereas international politics would be talking about uh, conflict is at the core the power maximization is the main issue so these objectives also we find different in both international relations and international politics however these are not very uh, distinctive uh, features one can also see that somehow international politics that will come within the international relations let's now see the meaning of international relations uh, when we talk about the meaning uh, we first of all we should ask the question why should uh, we study international relations now since we have seen the background of our study where we have seen important phenomena taking place in the world system in the world so now the states we see that they are uh, more uh, interacting so they are also independent interdependent now and therefore they are neatly connected now they are very in a complex way they are all connected and entangled and therefore it's important important to study international relations because the action of one state could definitely affect the action of other states it is also uh, interdisciplinary in nature that international relations cannot be studied in isolation if you have to study economic dimension you have one has to study a uh, cultural dimension perhaps so therefore psychological dimension as well that why states behave the way they behave uh, definitions uh, one of the prominent inter ir scholar uh, scholars morgan hans j morgenthau he talks about international politics include analysis of political relations and problems of peace among nations but most importantly he talks about it is struggle for and use of power among nations so basically in international relations the nations the states they are always struggling for power and they want to use power and therefore you see that there is a constant uh, conflict existing in, in in the world so be it india pakistan be it even uh, in the cold war so with union and united states be it china japan look at the states they are in constant struggle for power and they want to use the power and therefore they want to maximize their power because the countries they are always uh, thinking of self help they are thinking of uh, that how to survive first and therefore in order to survive they have to gain more and more power we can also see the palmer and perkins they have defined it in a broader ways that is not only up relations among nations it's also about the international organizations and groups it also includes a variety of transitional relationships at various levels but of course he considers nation state still remain the main actor in the international community if we understand the nature of international relations we see a uh, changing nature of international relations we see if we again go back to the background uh, what we were discussing uh, you know in, in in some of the slides there we see that how the countries from imperial expansion to world wars and the world war went is over the decline of imperialism that has led to decolonization so now the countries they became independent more in numbers it made the world order even more complex so it was very essential to study the nature of international relations the changing nature of international relations the distinction uh, this sorry dis disintegration of the soviet union became another feature of changing nature such as now the world is no more uh, bipolar it became unipolar and from there we see the multipolar world non state actors becoming very important which was not the case before earlier now multinational corporations be it uh, uh, the, the bill gates or be it uh, uh, ambani's or be it tatas i mean these non the non state actors they are quite influential in today's world order similarly we see non regional security threats we see nuclear weapons all these uh, are becoming a distinct feature of international relations today the nature is no more limited to the state centric ir now it is more than state centric ir that encompasses all these issues what we are seeing here if you look at the nature of ir particularly from the examination point of view that one must remember uh, this following points that what do we mean by nature nature is simply about the features of something that characteristics of something and the first feature the first uh, nature what we see of ir is the sovereign states as primary actors of international relations that simply means country 
or the state as a unit of this entire international system. If we look at the globe once again, it simply shows us that how the states are one of the most important actors here. Now, the, what do this, these, these, two, these states want? These states want national interest. They want to fulfill their national interest. They want to maximize their national interest because, for example, India, our national interest would be to give everything what its citizens require and also to safeguard ourselves, to keep our peoples safe, to keep our, ter our territory safe. So national interest, interest can be seen in different ways, for example, politi political interest, economic interest and uh, strategic interest. So in different ways, the national interest, it has been defined. So it's overall basically the maximizing the power. So more the state acquires power, the more it feels safer in international community. That's what the realist would argue. So international politics is struggle for power, therefore. The next feature of what we see of international relations is power is both a means as well as an end. So the power of a state helps the state to maximize its uh, interest and then its interest became becomes uh, or garners more power for the state so at the end of the day it's mostly the power what matters the most because it's the states are sovereign the states are seeking self-help there is uh, no one above states or no guardian over there who can look after uh, these states and therefore uh, if we talk about uh, the structuralist argument that there is an anarchy in the world and this anarchy make states behave in certain ways where they are seeking powers. So the next uh, the point that is conflict as the condition of international politics that of course flows from that uh, since there is a maximization of power, there is a competition to uh, gain more and more power by each state that will obviously would lead to conflict which is the condition of international politics international politics the next point is as a process of conflict resolution among nations now it does not simply mean that if we have conflict then states are always uh, they're fighting and they are at war there are different channels through which they try to resolve those uh, conflicts so international politics is also about the process of conflict resolution among nations that how to resolve those conflicts basically. Another feature, another nature we see of IR is continuous interactions amongst nations and the, hence states are since interdependent, they, uh, they are uh, sort of more uh, integrated now and therefore they will be interacting most of the time. They will be interacting bo both the ways, at times in the conflicts, at times cooperation. And next we see interdisciplinary nature of IR that we have discussed already that how the IR cannot be studied in isolation. It covers different areas, for example, the economic dimension of international relations, that's uh, uh, the psychology, for example, plays an important role to in order to understand the behavior, behavior of state. Uh, historical studies are also quite significant in studying uh, the subject matter of international relations. And lastly, we see the nature of IR includes both analytical and scientific studies, where in analytical studies we focus on uh, the main components, we observe the outcomes, and where in scientific studies we basically focus more on experimentations and empirical observations. So the theory building is, it remains one of the most important uh, features of IR, where uh, scholars are constantly using different methods in order to come up with better theories which can explain the international uh, phenomenon the best way possible. Now we see this quickly that uh, when we see the scope of international relations, uh, we must understand that when we started talking about uh, or when the international uh, sovereign nation states, they were interacting from all these 17th, 18th, uh, 19th centuries, in the beginning international relations as we have seen, it has emerged in the early 20th century. So in the beginning, it's basically this, it was focusing on 
the study of law and diplomatic history. So the study of law because it helps to regulate the behavior of states. But later, as we have seen, the scope of international relations has evolved because of so and so reasons that we have seen in the background part. So we will focus on the each point here that, uh, it, that they are the subject matter of international relations. For example, the number one, the study of international relations begins with the state system. So we have already seen in the map, falls on the map, that the states are the main actor and it begins with the state. So what do we study in international relations? Since the word itself is international, so between two nations, we study their relations and therefore the state ha has to be, the state has to be the main actor here. The second point, second subject matter of international relations is the study of relations, be it conflict or cooperation among states. So that's what basically we divide into mostly the conflictual relationship. At the same time, st states cooperate. So these relations are being studied, uh, basically they are being studied. The third part we see, which is very, very at the core of, uh, of every state is national interest. So national interest became becomes very important subject matter of international relations. National interest is seen in terms of national power. So the national power becomes another component of international relations or subject matter of international relations. Next, we see foreign policy. Foreign policy is nothing but the tool that the platform it, it, uh, it provides to state to garner those uh, national interests or maximize the power. So foreign policy of each and every state uh, is very, very significant uh, part of international relations. Now, international law, uh, becoming very important uh, arena of international relations because it helps us to understand that how the behavior of states can be regulated because as we have seen that the states are basically seeking powers and maximizing their national interest and therefore if every state is doing the same thing it would lead to conflicts and then conflicts and at times it goes it leads to war even and as you can see, even even in, in South Asian continent, we see that uh, subcontinent, we see that the countries are in constant conflict. For example, uh, in, look at the India and its neighbors. We are having conflicts with almost all the neighbors. So be it Pakistan, be it Bangladesh, be it Sri Lanka, or be it even at times in Nepal. And of course, one of the uh, main reasons we find that again the colonial uh, history. Anyway, that's not the point here. So international law helps us to regulate, to understand that how the country's behavior, the state's behavior, they are regulated or they should be regulated. Next element we see this uh, international organizations. International organizations are becoming very important, very significant because the international relations is not only about states. Of course, it begins with the state system, but it is beyond state system. That is global governance, global institutions, for example, uh, United Nations. The geopolitics is becoming another area of uh, area of subject matter or important subject matter of IR. What is geopolitics? Uh, geopolitics is nothing but the interface of geography or ge geographical regions with politics and interna international relations. So there are geographical regions. We are there. We see the co constant interface of politics and geography there. For example, Indian Ocean where many superpowers or major powers in, during the Cold War era and even now in the post-Cold War era we see that uh, India for example, the United States for example, Australia, now China is coming to the Indian Ocean region. So these geographical areas they are becoming very significant uh, theatre of uh, power display by these uh, emerging powers and uh, superpowers. Another geopolitical region can be Indo-Pacific region where again there is a competition to have more and more resources and uh, also to expand the influence of a particular state. Next uh, important uh, scope of IRVC that war and peace. So the war and peace remains again a very interesting area where we have seen the countries in the world they have been fighting different wars if you look, take the example of India, the India has fought uh, wars uh, with uh, China, with Pakistan, and therefore 
we see that the war is nothing new to this subcontinent this has been the part of all over the world all the most all the countries they have been in a war in one way or another and since we discuss war the war cannot go on forever we also have to talk about the peace so the war and peace remain one of the most important uh, subject matters of higher in the world we live in the different states they are also uh, they follow different ideologies the best example of ideology is uh, the cold war era when superpower one superpower soviet union is following the communist ideology on the other hand the united states is following that uh, capitalist ideology so these two art ideologies and the expansion we constantly see throughout the cold war era so therefore these ideologies also remain important scope of ir uh, let me outline a few more points which are uh, the subject matter of international relations the study of nationalism colonialism and imperialism uh, nuclear disarmament and arms control the nuclear issues are very important these days so ir also focuses on nuclear aspects the next we have issues related to environmental protection the environment remains again a major challenge in front of world community so international relations could talk about how different states are interacting to mitigate environmental uh, issues and next the policy making the different states they have different policy makings for example china you have authoritarian government and how policy making takes place there and how in a democratic country the policy would take place and how it's affecting the relations between states that is uh, seen uh, in policy making as subject matter of ir human rights is again one of the most important uh, areas now these days we know that the every state is supposed to protect the rights of its citizens what what if the state turns it back and rather it exploits the rights of its citizens who would take care of it and therefore we have global uh, institutions for example united nations so united nations would ensure that the rights of human beings simply because they are human it it, it should be ensured and uh, in the world we live today that we know that the refugee crisis for example or different states sometimes the, the failed state particularly they would simply not be bothered about the rights of its citizens and there the world it becomes the it becomes the responsibility responsibility of the world uh, community to ensure that the rights of every human being is ensured area and regional studies again it has become a important subject matter of ir because now the ir is studying uh, different areas and uh, regional and different regions as a political entity for example uh, independent universities of india in ir now is no more only the conceptual or political dimension now the areas different areas are being studied and being compared or sometimes uh, the case studies are done for example the european union as an area as a regional uh, study uh, for example west asia for example uh, east asia south asia southeast asia so that way we see an african study for example that where you study the different states so the the subject matter of ir has been divided into different regions and different areas so area studies they are uh, it is evolving as a subject matter of ir economic factor and demographic factors so uh, they remain very important as i have said already that uh, this is again important uh, subject matter of ir where economic dimensions how it affects uh, relations of different states similarly the demographic factors if you see india and china i mean we are the first and second most populated countries uh, india being second and uh, we are also the having maximum youth population in india this again becomes a sort of advantage for us if we utilize it in a, a proper manner but if you look at european uh, countries where the aging population is becoming a big problem next we see conflict uh, management and conflict resolution that we have already discussed before the issue of terrorism is one other area of uh, of area which is very important in ir these days countries they form different alliances and they form also different groupings so for example g77 so developing countries would be forming their own groups developed countries they will be having their own groups there will be certain groups based on certain issues for example to protect environment so all these alliances and groupings of different states are also studied so finally we will look into what is the importance of international relations why do we have to study that we have already seen 
Uh, however, according to Quincy Wright, uh, the basically it provides us a general knowledge. So if you study international relations, you will have a general knowledge uh, of international uh, issues. You imagine in different subjects, for example, sociology, for example, psychology, for example, uh, political science even, mostly we study issues about uh, different units. But this is one subject which provides us general knowledge about how international system behaves, how things basically uh, takes place uh, when it comes to international arena. The study of this discipline, it also assists in the practical activity of military officials, diplomats, colonial and overseas administrations, statesmen, politicians, international lawyers, international uh, financiers, international propagandists even, international educators, journalists and media men. It would be quite practical uh, uh, knowledge for them. It also would enable them to understand the world problems at times. The other, another scholar, uh, set of scholars that is Palmer and Perkins, they would divide uh, into six uh, parts that is uh, human survival and progress. So if we study this discipline, we understand that the discipline explains how men and nations tend to act in given circumstances and so tells us what conditions should be encouraged and what conditions should be discouraged if we are to promote international harmony and well-being. So through it, it one learns that what deferred is a kind of peace, perhaps the only peace that nations will ever know. One also gains a sense of realism, a realization that the road to a better order is filled with complex hurdles that it can be overcome only by men who see the horizon ahead and the soil below. Understanding and controlling problems where the study of international relations cannot solve all the problems of international life, it can at least help us in grappling with and controlling those problems. It also provides objectivity and perspective that the, the nature of our study is such that uh, we try to learn everything in an objective manner. And uh, since we try to understand a particular international phenomena, in an objective way and try to explain things in more uh, systematic and scientific ways that objective knowledge helps us to understand things in a better way and it also gives us a perspective that uh, how different uh, issues different issues concerning international relations they are sorted out they are dealt with Next, we see understanding the role of subjectivity. Uh, we do see that uh, that we try to study IR in a more objective ways, but when we come when it comes to states, uh, they do preach all the objective ideas like justice, equality. But when it comes to this practical behavior, that there we find that how the states they behave in a more subjective manner. And uh, finally, internationalism along with nationalism, we see the countries, you know, how the countries, uh, they are, they, they tend to focus on more on nationalism, nationalist ideas, but while studying international relations, that helps us to understand that ultimately it's not only about the nationalist, uh, uh, the narrow boundaries, it is also that uh, internationalism in form of different issues, which are not only limited to a particular nation, it's now, it's the nature of these issues are such that they affect the entire world community. So we see nationalism within a state, at the same time, internationalism when it comes to this world community. And finally, we see that the significance of studying IR also helps us to understand that, that look at the prospect of uh, a better world, that how different issues can be mitigated, how they have been dealt with so far, how the entire world community is dealing with, for example, COVID-19. Now the entire world community is cooperating, uh, or be it tourism, be it environmental issues, that all these efforts are in the line of making a, this world uh, a, a better world, a more peaceful world, and uh, establish, establishing peace and harmony. For your reference, I have uh, given a list, list of resources 
that is introduction to international relations this is uh, again uh, one of the important uh, books which i've used uh, while making these ppts and you can also refer uh, a few more books uh, which suits your requirement and uh, you can read more on these topics on your own and so far examination point of view is concerned these points should be enough for you to at least write an answer for this particular topic thank you